peace here, everybody. Wow, that's uh, such a slogan. Um, and I'm actually part of this church. Um, I just can only imagine um, all the stories that are connected to each of those still images. Um, struck by whole households <laughs> being baptized and seeing the multi generational ministry that has been such a core part of Grace Brimpton or the other names <laughs> for uh, so many decades. Um, Wow, I, I, it was like a, a moment of uh, climax when the old building came down. <laughs> like, oh, no! you know? um, but then just to see all the um, sweat effort, the, 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 the work that went in uh, from so many of you and others that have come before us. It reminds me of my home church in Oakland, California. I just think of my parents' generation, and that's, that was the generation of our church. And, just a flood of memories of that for me. Uh, also just recognizing uh, emotions that must be in today. Uh, mixed emotions as Pastor has, has already uh, said to us. The sense of uh, great celebration for so many decades of fruitfulness. Um, but what we have known up to this point coming to an end and something new beginning. Uh, I do. I am reminded of a story, um, uh, an experience for me. I had the opportunity to visit the Holy Land, I uh, think, about four years ago, and went with a bunch of covenanters from Oregon and Canada uh, to on this trip. And the, one of the highlights of my trip there was to be at Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee. And I remember getting there and being reminded of the story of this being the general location of where Jesus first called his disciples. Okay, at the very beginning of the Gospels, right? And um, uh, what's amazing about Capernaum is that the, the stone road that Jesus and the disciples walked on is still there. And so it's just kind of amazing, you know, just the, the remnants of, of, of that city. And I remember standing at the shore and recalling scripture of Jesus walking up to those pre-disciples and saying to them, come follow me. And how they dropped their nets. And just we can only imagine with our, our mind's eye like the conversation and, and the timing and the tone of how that conversation might have gone. But eventually them saying, dropping their nets and, and saying yes and following Jesus, right? And I remember standing at the shore, so it was a very rocky area, and I just started to weep. Because the the reality of uh, you know, just being in that actual physical space and thinking that Jesus was actually standing somewhere within a few feet of where I was standing and having this conversation with his disciples. And I heard afresh to me God's call of come follow me. And I began to pray, not just for myself, but I prayed for each of my family members, my extended family members, my name. I started to pray for all of our churches here and, and our pastors here in the Pacific Northwest Conference. I prayed that the reality of Christ's call upon us would be fresh and powerful. That we would once again, as we always have to do every day, say yes to Jesus, right? I'm struck by the images. I'm struck by all the stories that I don't know, but I can only imagine that are represented in these images. And I'm struck, church, that you unanimously voted to say yes to Jesus again. And on behalf of your sister churches, and for me, as, uh, as I serve as your superintendent, I just want to say I'm inspired by your faith. I'm inspired by your obedience. I'm spot inspired by the fact that if, if we can think in musical terms here, and I'm going to steal Grant's thunder a little bit, but I saw his piano book. Where is it, Grant? It's a prop for the sermon. So I'm stealing his thunder. Okay. So I told him I saw it. Like, oh, I'm breaking out the highs because it reminds me of all those piano lessons in <laughs> my childhood. Okay, let's speak about music for a second. I think so often we think of a moment like this 
like a decrescendo, I, meaning going from something loud to something soft and ultimately to an end. But I want you all to think of this as a crescendo. Okay? Because what's amazing about Capernaum is that they have this ancient site that they have excavated that they believe to be Peter's house. I can only imagine that there probably was a church going on there as Peter and disciples were planting churches and getting things started, right? And remember what Jesus said to Peter. He said, on this rock I will build my church. Right? He, he was talking to Peter and he said, not even the, the gates of hell will, will come against me building my church. Now he didn't mean just the physical church, because if he did, that site, Peter's home, there would still be a, a thriving church you know, that, that would trace its way back. It would be called St. Peter's Covenant Church or whatever. <laughs> But he's saying that the church, the movement, the crescendo of the gospel going out, of what we celebrate today with Easter, the empty tomb, the risen Lord, victory, and all of what the church lives out over these last 2,000 years since, 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 since uh, Mary reported to the disciples that the tomb was empty and that Jesus was alive. You are all in the flow of that. Today is in the flow of that. We're not decreasing. We're not getting softer right here. We're getting increasing louder as we continue to say yes to Jesus. Just wanted to share that word of encouragement. And then I just also want to take this time to thank Grant and Nancy and the family. Um, I am just very, very aware of how today might feel, must feel, and all of what it represents and the significant change for you all. And I just want to say on behalf of the conference family, I want to express my deep gratitude for your faithfulness, for your faithful service amongst us here in this church and throughout the conference. For these decades of pastoral ministry here at Grace, we have been blessed here with your leadership, your teaching, and your preaching, and your shepherd. It's such a good shepherd. Lives have been changed for eternity here in this place. Disciples were made. The good news of Jesus Christ has gone out, is proclaimed and embodied by your community and around the world. Okay? The neighbors have encountered the hospitality and the presence of Christ because of you. I just want to say well done. Well, we're so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you for your impactful ministry in what we know as Grace Covenant Church. And let's just hang on to the promises of Philippians 1 and 6 that says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian. A Christian. Thank you, church. I just want to say, you have no idea of it. That verse is my verse. That's the one that the Lord first spoke to me when I was just out of a wild living I had no confidence in myself. Point of view. Okay. Now I just want to say a huge thanks to Greg and his kindness to us. He's worked behind the scenes with, with Michael White and myself and Jackie and the four of us. 